Welcome to the Business Book Awards Black Lives Matter author interview series. Hello, I'm here with Satna Piru, who is the author of Let's Get Visible, that uh, was uh, an award winner in the last Business Book Awards. And Satna is a brand expert and also the founder of um, Innovisions ID. So Satna, tell us, tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to be doing what you're doing. Cool. Um, well, I trained as a graphic designer many, many moons ago, more than I'd care to mention. Um, but even then, I realised that most designers didn't really understand business and we weren't trained for business at all. Um, and then I, I decided to take a, a postgrad in marketing so I could understand how design fit into the, into the marketing mix. And I so I thought if I can if I can learn business speak and marketing speak, I'll be able to converse with my clients in the language that they understand. Um, and I was only in my twenties back then, but um, that was kind of um, my my thought. And I thought that I would start an agency with that with that you know business focus to the design that we're doing. Um, but then I ended up falling into marketing and um, uh, in radio, which is the least visual medium you can think of. Um, but so I was working on the marketing side and briefing at design agencies, though, to produce our marketing collateral um, and getting the results back that weren't really right. And so I kind of, again, realized there was a problem. But at that age, I was like, sort me out a Mac and I'll do it myself. So um, so I took it in-house and ended up becoming the, the in-house designer for a radio group, uh, which, um, you know, we produced all the marketing collateral and the advertisements and even started doing ads for our radio advertisers. And we'd say, book your radio ads with us and we'll um, do your press ads for free. And um, so it, it was sort of cross, cross uh, media advertising before the, the phrase was turned, uh, the, the phrase was coined. Um, and then um, I decided to, to leave there because there was no career progression if I created my own role, worked for a few design agencies, but really missed media um, and the excitement and going to free gigs and things like that and the parties. So I ended up going back into radio and um, worked in sponsorship and promotions, um, but it was helping uh, big national brands um, and local advertisers, um, you know, uh, amplify their voice on air. Um, and I would say, you know, that really honed my copywriting skills because you need to get a message every 30 seconds or less on radio. Um, so you can really get to the, you know, the nugget of what you, what you wanted to say. Um, and then I came down south and did that in radio, in radio down here for a couple of brands called Kiss 100 and Magic 105.4. Um, and after that seven years in radio, I decided I wanted to move into magazines. So I moved in, over to Cross Media, which was looking at magazines, TV, radio, online events and mobile campaigns. So again, big brands like Sony Ericsson or Toyota and bringing those um, brands to life on a variety of different platforms. Um, so I looked after like the Sony Ericsson um, Empire Awards, for example, creating them a sponsorship platform to amplify their brand, um, whilst also making sure that the funding helped the awards go, go, go ahead. So did that and then went over to the Telegraph, got poached to do the same for the Telegraph. Um, and, and then moved into mobile because after a while the bottom fell out of the press. I think it was about 2008 with the big crash. Um, uh, a lot of people got made redundant in the Telegraph. Unfortunately not me because I'd already left to go traveling. So, <laughs> but there wasn't a job for me to come back to. So I moved into mobile and, um, and then worked in the digital space. Again, doing the same with brands. And stopped after my second child, um, and I got postnatal depression. So, um, so that was kind of the beginning of my entrepreneur journey. Um, I decided to study um, uh, interior design because I just love making things look beautiful, and that's what you do when you've got a toddler and a and a baby in postnatal depression is you start another degree. So, <laughs> so, so I did that. Um, but in the meantime, my husband started an entrepreneurial course. Um, called Key Person of Influence. His brochure that I designed was seen and his branding was seen by the speaker, it was held up as the gold standard. Um, and um, that was Andrew Priestley who, who held it up as such. And um, he's actually written the foreword in my book now in a wonderful, you know, five years later. He didn't know who I was that back then. But my husband came home with um, seven business cards of people who wanted to work with me. Fantastic. Um, and and I, I sort of paint the picture that I was, I had a baby on one hip and, you know, a toddler at my feet and I was stirring, you know, cooking tea and he came in and, and gave me these business cards and I was like, what's that? So then I realized that maybe my future wasn't doing interior design because I would have started with zero clients. Um, but this meant that I, I, I then had a handful of clients to start my business with. And that was nearly five years ago. 
fantastic. And then you wrote <laughs> and published the book last year. And it, um, as I said, it uh, uh, was uh, an award winner in the Business Book Awards. But I'm wondering, Sapna, you come across as having had immense success. Everything you've said sounds like, you know, your, your career has just flowed. But I'm, I'm talking to um, a range of our authors who have um, been part of the Business Book Awards and uh, around the Black Lives Matter movement. And I'm wondering if you, as a woman of colour, have experienced racism in your entrepreneur and indeed book writing journey. Uh, yeah, um, in, in my entrepreneur journey, possibly not as much. Um, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll decide, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, certainly more in my corporate, because a lot of my life was spent in, corp in the corporate world. Um, before and obviously you've got authors that that are still in the corporate world and and I'm writing books and I found um, you know we've been talking about Black Lives Matters and um, the fact that the racism in 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 America is so much more overt and so much more blatant um, and being in Britain my experiences of racism have not been it's a very British kind of racism. It's um, it's very polite. Um, it's nuanced. It's subtle, and you kind of think, did, did, did they mean that? You know, did they? Uh, and you kind of you don't want to cause a fuss because that's a very British thing to also do, and you sort of sweep these things under the carpet. So um, you know, in my in my career, I had you know examples like. Um, a, a female boss actually so I knew it wasn't sexism um, telling me that um, I didn't have enough gravitas to take on um, a large account um, and I remember thinking at the time is it because I'm little because I'm, I'm quite diminutive um, is it because I'm female well no she's female as well and the account went to another woman um, or you know uh, to quote Ali G is it because I is black because that, that was very prevalent at the time and I didn't call her out and I didn't ask what lack of gravitas meant. I just said to her, well, I've just signed 400,000 pounds with Toyota. Are you telling me that I didn't, that Toyota felt I didn't have enough gravitas with their account, but I didn't push it any further. And I never wanted to be that girl that played the race card. Um, so again, you know, you don't want to make a fuss. You don't want to be seen as difficult in calling it out. Um, another, um, female boss again weirdly I don't, I don't know if this is I don't know <laughs> but she consistently called me the name of the other brown person in the room um Ooh. over I'm, I'm saying months right months if not years um we worked on the same team um two uh people of color in in the group we were both brown and and she consistently called my name uh the wrong one so I'd quietly just sort of correct her and say, no, it's Sapna, you know, and this continued. Um, and people were starting to titter because it just continued and it started getting a bit embarrassing. Um, and in the end, I, I had to speak up. But all I said was, no, I'm the other one. <laughs> when she yeah, good called my name again. And um, funnily enough, she never did it again. <laughs> uh, well, you obviously chose the right response there. That's very, well, eventually, yeah. Eventually, eventually. Um, and then I've had, you know, I've, I've had another, another, it was a friend uh, who worked in media. So, you know, again, uh, somebody in media who was a friend and we were getting ready for a night out and she turned to me and she said, well, you're a lot, a lot better looking than a lot of brown people I know, a lot of Asian people I know. And she went, but, but that's because you don't really look Indian, do you? Goodness, yeah. Um, and I was like, what do you say? You know, yes. we were getting ready for a night out, the mood was upbeat. She meant it as a compliment, a really weird Compliment. my mother's from India so you know and I think she's beautiful so where, where, where's that you know I'm half Mauritian as well if, if anybody was wondering um so I don't look typically Indian but that was a weird thing to say um you know and and, and I've not called any of those things out you know and when I was younger there was there was things like you know being shouted abuse in the street when I was walking down the street with a white boyfriend um or walking into a village pub and the whole thing going the whole place going silent I mean all but the wow. jukebox stopped with my with my um my white partner i've always had white boyfriends um that reaction has happened less down south it's happened less but all those incidences in the corporate world that i've just told you told you about all happened in london so it's still there yeah. um and it's and it's still it still happens and i think part of becoming an entrepreneur um is that you don't have to deal with those situations so much because you walk away you know in the past i chose to walk away i chose to ignore it i chose to laugh it off 
Um, and in not calling it out, I realized during the whole black, like, you know, but the explosion that's happened in the last month, I've been looking at my own um, behavior and realizing in not calling it out, I, I was part of the problem um, in not calling it out and not stopping those, in not being brave enough. So, you know, it's, it's a brilliant thing that you're doing uh, now, Lucy, having these conversations, because it's the first time in the last month that I've really talked about my experience as a person of colour because I've sort of ignored it, um, you know, for most it's of my life. easy to ignore, isn't it? Ignored I mean, it, like, you know, walked I... laughed it off, pretended it didn't matter, changed jobs sometimes, you know, if you I felt oh, I wasn't yeah. progressing yeah. because there was this wall, this ceiling that I was hitting and it's like, well, you know, that, that lady that said I had no, a lack of gravitas for, for the Motors account, I ended up leaving, getting headhunted by the Telegraph and they made me head of Motors. So, so that was kind ironic. of ironic. Yeah, quite ironic. Um, I never wrote back to and told her. Um, so, what what about um, what about in terms of writing and publishing books? Do you think? Do you see? I mean, certainly the um, Black Writers Guild, which has just been formed, is very oh. has been very um, has written an open letter to the publishing industry uh, about um, the lack of black representation, black authors, black um, black black uh, uh, staff members, but black uh, uh, you know uh, people in publishing. Um, yeah. And I wondered if you'd felt any of that um, either actual discrimination or, or worried about discrimination when you were writing your book or, um, or getting it published, making yourself visible through the book, whether that had been an issue for you at all. It has, but there's, I mean, it's crippling. It, I have crippling um, kind of imposter syndrome or, you know, it's, I'm, I'm working on a work in progress. Um, and, um, and I've had many chats with uh, somebody that we know, Tara Halliday, about this because she, she works on that. She's been brilliant. Um, and, and I think when I was writing the book, I not only had imposter syndrome from will anyone like the book, um, I, I, I listened to a talk that you gave, Lucy, about women um, in publishing and um, how there are fewer, fewer female voices um, being, you know, being heard. And it was kind of, it was something that actually encouraged me to, 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 to write the book because I thought, well, you know, and then I realized it was only 11% of business leaders in the design community are female. Um, I dread to think what the percentage is of BAME uh, leaders in the design Indeed. industry. Um, but certainly the females were underrepresented um, to the tune of 11%. So that made me more determined to write the book from a female standpoint. What I realized as I was progressing with the book was I felt I didn't want to put it out under my own name because you'd, you'd already said that people, that, that female books get reviewed um, to a, you know, a le less yes. well yes. Um, and they sell for a lesser price generally and they get you know, judged more harshly. I already knew I was entering a space which had 89% of leaders being men. So um, you know, I kind of did consider changing the, the having a pen name and putting it as a white male name because that yeah. way it would be rather than you know my name's satner it's clearly not british um and and to be a female as well was giving it a double you know like it was going to be harder to for this yes. book to succeed I, i'm very lucky that actually that wasn't the case and the book's been very well reviewed but these were my fear these were my fears clearly based on some kind of, you know, um, experience in the past. Of course. Maybe it wouldn't do so quite so well. So I'm glad that my publisher managed to talk, it out, talk me out, out of that. Um, and it has come out in my name. But I'm, I'm wondering if anybody who, um, who is a white author has ever had those fears, you know, about will it work if I put it out under my own name? Um, and I, I challenge that's probably not the case. Um, so no, that, I think not for yeah. that reason. I think I think it's certainly true that that well, certain females. women authors yeah. have yeah. Um, changed Rowling. their J.K. <laughs> Rowling for starters. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know whether it's um, whether the discrimination, the 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 gender discrimination happens so much in the business book area but but you know as we know um uh our first set of um award-winning wonderful award-winning authors in the first year of the business books were all white men and that was a completely unexpected accidental um happening and and led to us becoming uh, involved in using the Business Book Awards as a platform for first um, encouraging more women to write and now for yeah. diversity more generally. 
And I don't think I'd have written my book if it wasn't for your campaigning for female voices to be heard. I genuinely don't think I would have written my book um, until I heard that message. So it was it was a game changer for me. Well, that makes me very happy to hear that. <laughs> um, and and how has um, has winning the business book awards being being um, viewed? Uh, having having that um, behind you and endorsing your book has that made a difference to you uh, in in terms of your um, your 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 career in terms of your your business? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the book came out in January. Um, it, 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 it was published in, in 2019, but um, right before Christmas. So I didn't tell anybody about it. And it was really hard. Um, but we launched it with intention in, in January because that's when people tend to look at their business and go, right, you know, they look at their lives and they go, right, I'm going to get a new body and a, and a you know, new eating regime and, and, and I need to sort out my business stuff as well. And, and branding obviously comes into that. So it, came, it launched in January. It won the award. It got nominated, and then it won the award in um, March, and that was lockdown. So unfortunately, I wore my fancy frock, but on, only on the sofa. And I was like, "Get off my cape!" To the boys, because I had a lovely cape, and this this dress is really not made for sitting on the sofa with my with my little ones. Um, but uh, yeah, so so since then, yes, I've had people con- connect with me. Um, people pop up, you know, who had been out of touch for a while. Um, a lady that I used to take my, my firstborn swimming with um, uh, when he was six months old and he's now 10 has, has now got in touch with me about branding, which is just really random. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and I've actually looking at the figures, I felt that I was busier than ever, but I felt I thought that I was also because of homeschooling and I just didn't have as many hours in the day. But looking at the figures, it turns out that I've had my biggest quarter yet. Um, which um, is that's extraordinary. That's, that's really incredible amazing. in lockdown, and I'm super grateful to be able to to, to say that. Um, but I think also what I do, um, and for other people, if their businesses have slowed down, they've kind of again thought, right, oh, I'm going to sort out my business shit, you know, if I can swear. Um, and what I do loosely falls under business shit to sort out. So that's been it's been great for me, and that people have had time to think about it. Um, and, and it's given me more confidence. Um, having the book out there has definitely helped with my imposter syndrome, that people are buying the book, loving the book, wanting to work with me even more. I couldn't bring out a book called Let's Get Visible and Hide Behind It. <laughs> no, uh, indeed. <laughs> so, um, so it encouraged me to get on video. It's still not very natural on video, and I don't, I don't like doing video. I love chatting to people like this, um, but actually just doing a piece of camera on my own, I feel very awkward about still. Um, but you know, it's, it's getting better. Um, I'm getting better at it and I'm getting more, but a lot of my speaking engagements unfortunately fell away, um, with, uh, with lockdown. So I, I, the way that I was getting my book out was actually meeting people, speaking, meeting people and people buy the book. Um, but now I'm, I'm kind of going to start looking at mailing more of my books out <laughs> as, uh, as we're, all, we're all advised to, but I haven't really had to so far. So it's it's really um, really very positive to hear that um, you were encouraged to write your book because of the um, campaign for more women to write that came out of the Business Book Awards um, in the first place, and and uh, this year we have and last year we've we've really promoted diversity. I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for us at the Business Book Awards as to what we should what we should continue to do in the light of Black Lives Matter, promoting diversity generally. If you've got any thoughts, I'd be really happy to hear them. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think you're doing amazing stuff, Lucy, with um, with the BBAs and, um, you know, promoting diversity in all its forms, I think is important. Um, and you know, we were talking about this just before the call, and I said, well, obviously you've you've got a, you know, a diverse team on the BBAs, which actually really helps. Makes a massive um, difference. Yes, I have to absolutely difference. pay so, tribute to Kasim and Saf and uh, their their um, and uh, I think emotion of what, diversity and their understanding of diversity is so so important. And to even be aware of that and um, and kind of you know sort of realise where 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 more diversity needs to happen um, is doing more than most companies that I've seen so far. Um, so I think you're doing I think you're doing a great job. Um, and thank you very much <laughs> for me and the rest of the BAME community. Really, <laughs> um, I just think that's amazing. So thank well, you. Very you. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking to me today. And uh, uh, good luck with uh, getting the book out there even further. Thank you so much.
Thanks very much. Bye.